I got some good feedback on the video about the Vaporware unreleased consoles. So here I'm going to make a unreleased computers video. Hope you enjoy it. Folio represents uh, a whole new product direction for both Palm and for mobile computing. Jeff Hawkins has certainly had great impact in the world of collaboration technology. He is seen as the inventor of the Palm and the smartphone. He did a hat-trick attempt in 2007 with the Palm Folio, a 499 US dollar Linux-based sub-notebook which would integrate with the smartphone. The idea was a more suitable device for document editing amongst other things. The public shrugged their shoulders and Palm pulled the plug on the project. Long before the I anything, in the early 90s, the telecom company BellSouth cooperated with Apple on a computer and telephone hybrid, the Vault. And what did that stand for again? Oh yeah, Wizzy Active Lifestyle Telephone. Besides calling your friends, you could use the message pad, address book and the fax anywhere functionality on the device. Why Vault was discontinued is unclear. In 1985, Eurohard SA announced the Dragon MSX64. The MSX platform, based on the C80 processor, also found in the Commodore 128 and Osborne 1, was going to provide cross-platform compatibility with other MSX-based machines like the Spectra Video, and also backports compatibility with other Dragon machines. Eurohard went bankrupt shortly after the MSX64 was announced, and only 500 units were manufactured. These were granted to employees a salary since the company was drained for cash. An overclocked Mac monster called Extreme Mac MacTrust G4 was promised by Swedish company Extreme in 1999. They claimed that super advanced cooling techniques and by exploiting existing features in Apple hardware they could squeeze out 1.2 GHz of the fastest PowerPC G4 CPU, which in itself only could guarantee for a mere 500 MHz. The expected shipping date in August was missed and so was the new date in January. In parallel, the standard Mac hardware evolved and no one cared about the Xtreme Mac anymore. This is an interesting story about the legendary Spectrum makers. The Loki was going to be an Amiga killer with its dazzling sound and graphics spec. But the high requirements to the hardware lacked a realistic approach in terms of time and money. After the Amstrad takeover, the project was scrapped. But two ex Sinclair engineers, John Matthiessen and Martin Brennan, continued with the project under the new company called Flair to produce a new multiprocessor console. Atari was drawn into the project, seeking to compete with the Super Nintendo and Genesis and brought the machine to the market as the Atari Jaguar. The SX series was an attempt to make the successful Commodore machines portable. The SX64 was a version of the C64 and lacking the cassette deck. This was released but never successful in the market due to a high price range. The SX500 had the equivalent case but stuffed with Amiga 500 hardware. Ooh. Only 4 units were produced in 1995 and it's not known if Commodore had actual production plans for the SX500 or if this was just a trial balloon. Atari also fancied a piece of the hardly portable laptop market. They exhibited the 65XEP in 1985. The Commodore SX64 competitor was an Atari 65XE in a different housing, and the price was just under 400 US dollars. Only one prototype was built. The ABC range of 8 computers was primarily aimed at the educational, research and business market by the UK-based manufacturer Acorn. They were basically repackaged BBC Micros 
with expanded RAM and in some cases with extra CPUs in addition to the standard 6502 processor. In 1985 Acorn was acquired by Olivetti and the project went six feet under. The company which put more personal computers into more homes than anyone else is Commodore, located not in the Silicon Valley. Near the end of 1990, Commodore decided to make another successor to the famous C64. The Amiga lookalike was first intended to be fully compatible with the C64, but it wasn't, then a switch between the C65 and C64 modes was added. Even so, the machine had great specs, but high production costs and technical problems hindered the release. Looking for a powerful home computer? This is the one. Texas Instruments Home Computer. Texas Instruments became well known for using Bill Cosby in their advertisements for the home computer line. The TI-99-4 sold very well, unlike the TI-99-2 announced January 1983. It was never mass produced, but Bill advertised for it nevertheless. Hey, he got one million a year from TI. OLPC stands for One Laptop Per Child, which sounds like the perfect idea to boost the usage of high-end technology in all parts of the globe. The design team has uh, been a bit eager though. The XO3 tablet will have a camera, 8.5x11 inch touchscreen, it will be waterproof, combine a Pixel QI indoor slash outdoor display, while still it will be thinner than an iPhone. And the price? 100 bucks and scheduled for release in 2012. Bets are up! Atari again had big plans for a successor for the Falcon 030. The microbox had a new case and an upgraded bus from 16 to 32 bit. The company worked on it for a while before it was buried and it marked Atari's exit of the home computer market. They restructured and focused 100% on the Jaguar. Interestingly, the microbox is mentioned in Sony's patent applications for the PS2, as the case is very much alike in design and it has the ability to be placed both vertically and horizontally. And the number one unreleased computer is... Escom AG had big plans for the Amiga computer after they bought the rights to it, and the Amiga Walker was the replacement to the Amiga 1200. The Walker was still based on the AGA chipset, but had built-in CD-ROM and better expansion possibilities. The design of the case got a chilly reception, and comparisons were made to Doctor Who's Robot Dog K9, Darth Vader's helmet, and a vacuum cleaner. 